In this video, I'll show you one technique for constructing the boater we patterned in another video. The link to that video is in the description below. You will need fabric for the boater. If it's lightweight, use a fusible interfacing to give it body. Lining should have a bit of body to it. This is an acetate taffeta. You will need your boater crown pattern. You'll need a view through ruler, a rotary cutter and mat or fabric scissors, millinery petersham, which is not polyester grosgrain ribbon. You'll need pins. You'll need sewing thread and a milliner's needle. You'll need single and double strands when sewing. All of my thread has been waxed prior to stitching. You'll need something to mark your fabric with. You'll need your wired boater parts, a tip, a brim, and a crown. Fold back the 2-inch extension on the crown pattern and pin this to your fashion fabric. On the center back ends, draw regular sewing seam allowance. In this case, it's 3 eighths of an inch and I'm using a colored pencil, not a marker for this. On the lengthwise seams, you want to draw anywhere from 1 half to 3 quarter inch seam allowance. I'm using 3 quarter inch seam allowance for my demonstration. You should have seam allowance around your entire piece. Place your wired tip on the fabric and trace around it. On the fabric, mark your notches. Place your wired brim on the fabric and trace around it. You're going to do this twice. On the crown, cut out on the drawn lines. On the brims, cut out on the drawn lines. On the tip, you are cutting away from the drawn line at least half an inch. This is a seam allowance for later. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it does need to be an obvious seam allowance. Be sure to make all of these markings on the wrong side of the fabric. You should have four cut pieces of fabric. On your crown, mark the notches at center front. We are going to connect the tip to the crown. It doesn't matter which edge of the crown you use, as this is a straight sided crown. Line up the tip with the center front and center back notches on the crown. Pin in place. Add a couple more pins to the side for stability. You can use as many pins as you need. On larger crowns, you obviously need more. But for smaller crowns like this, I find one at center front, one at center back, and two on the sides works just fine. We are going to use a ladder stitch to connect the two edges. With a knotted thread, bring the needle from the inside to the outside through the crinoline tape on one of the edges. Make a stitch in the other edge directly above where the stitch came out. The stitch should be about an eighth of an inch long. Now, make another stitch on the opposite edge directly below the stitch you just made. Continue stitching like this for a few stitches. 
After about five or six stitches, pull the thread taut to cinch up the two edges. Continue stitching like this all the way around till you get back to the beginning. When you get back to the beginning, make a couple of extra stitches with knots in them, and then carry the needle to the inside of the crown. Clip the thread, leaving a small tail. Your crown is now ready to be covered. Place your fashion fabric wrong side down against the top of the crown. Pin matching all of the notches against the crown and the markings you made on the fabric. You just need to pin on the sides and center back and center front. With a needle and thread, bring the needle from the inside of the crown to the outside of the crown through the tip fabric. This is going to be a simple running stitch. The stitches need to be about a quarter of an inch to three eighths inch apart. Remove pins as you get to them. You want this stitch to be as consistent as possible, keeping the tip fabric as taut against the crown as possible. Continue the running stitch all the way around the crown until you get back to the beginning. When you get back to the beginning, do a few extra stitches in place to anchor the thread. When done with the stitches, pull the thread to the inside, clip leaving a tail. Finger press down any excess fabric below the stitching. On the crown piece of fabric, pin right sides together and stitch the center back seam. Finger press open the seam. Turn the fabric crown right side out. Place the crown fabric at center back with a pin. Make sure that the seam allowance is to the inside. Repeat for center front. Make sure to match the marking at center front on the crown. These two pins just help us get the rest of the crown fabric over the crown top. Once center front and center back are pinned, Slowly push down the crown fabric over the wired crown. Once you have it on the crown, 
you can remove the center front and center back pins and then inch down the crown fabric over the wired crown. Make sure your seam allowance stays flat and be sure not to catch the crinoline on the other edge. Take your time to get the crown fabric situated correctly over the wired crown. Make sure not to twist the center back seam. Push down the crown fabric until you have the drawn seam allowance that you added before past the wired edge. In this case, three quarters of an inch. So you should have three quarters of an inch above and below the wired edge. Fold in the seam allowance at the tip edge until you have a flush edge with the tip. The folded crown fabric should be right on the edge of the wired tip. The needle and thread, you want to bring the needle up through the crown edge from the inside, catching the tip. Using a slip stitch, Take a small stitch in the folded crown fabric and then a small stitch in the tip fabric. You're going to repeat this stitch all the way around. The stitches should be no longer than about a sixteenth of an inch. I'm using a contrast thread so you can see what I'm doing, but if you use a matching thread color, you'll never see this stitch. After about three or four stitches, Pull your thread taut to make sure that you keep all the stitches cinched in. You also want to make sure that you are not catching the fabric to the outside where you can see the stitch. When you get back to the beginning, complete one more stitch, then take the thread to the inside of the crown. You're going to remove the needle and make a loose knot in the thread. Insert the unthreaded needle into the loop and tighten the loop. Carry the knot down to where the stitch is coming out of the crown. Sink the needle into the crown to line it up. Tighten the thread as you remove the needle. This will anchor the knot in place. Clip the thread, leaving a tail. The top of your crown should be finished. 
On mine, because I'm using thin fabric, you can see my seam allowance. On thicker fabric, you won't see it as much. Fold in the seam allowance on the other end of the crown. You're going to baste this seam allowance down. I'm using a contrast thread so you can see it. In this case, we want to stitch about a half an inch away from the folded edge. Center back is its own indicator, but we need to mark center front. We're going to do a big contrast thread baste that shows us the position of center front. Make sure you mark this according to the marks you have on the buckram crown. Your crown is now ready to connect to the brim. Lay your brim fashion fabric right side up over the wired brim. Pin in place. Now baste along the edge of the wired brim through the fabric. Baste as close as you can to the edge. Baste along the head size line you drew on the buckram through the fabric. You can keep these stitches about half an inch to three quarters of an inch apart. This is what it should look like when it's completely basted. Repeat these steps on the other side of the brim. You will also need to baste the head size line on this side. You can use the basted line from the other side as your guideline. When complete, you should have both sides of the head size line basted and both edges of the wired edge on the outside. Cut out the center of the brims past the seam allowance. This part doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but do try to keep it as neat as you possibly can. On your fabric, mark the notches that represent the sides and center front and center back. Like with the crown, you're going to thread baste center front and center back. This is very important that you do not skip this step. Measure the outside wired edge of the brim. For me, my measurement is about 30 inches. It's okay if you have just a little bit extra, this measurement doesn't need to be super precise. To make bias tape, take one corner of a piece of fabric and fold it against the selvage edge like this. Finger press in the fold. Mark the fold with a marking tool. Draw a parallel line to the line you just drew, the width of the desired bias. For my sample, it's two inches. When completely drawn, cut out the bias strips. When I measure the strips, I see that I have more than 30 inches, which will be plenty to cover the outside edge of my brim. Place the strips at 90 degree angles together, right sides together. You are going to sew at the diagonal angle created between the two corners. Here I'm using a marker to show you that stitching line. When sewn, this creates a bias seam 
which will allow the bias to flex more around the edge of the brim. Trim the seam allowance to a scant quarter and cut off the little dog ears on the ends. Finger press open the seam. Press the center fold wrong sides together. Then cut off the pointed ends leaving squared off ends. Pin the raw edge of the folded bias tape to the fabric edge of the brim. You don't have to start and stop at any place in particular, but I typically start at either center back or center front. When you get to the end, overlap the bias tape by the width of the bias tape. In my case, it's two inches. So from the overlap, measure out two inches and then add an extra eighth of an inch. This will allow us to create a seam that will make a continuous loop of the bias. Remove the pins that are closest to the two cut edges. Open out the folds and place them right sides together. At this angle, you're going to make sure that you have at least a sixteenth of an inch hanging out past the opposite edge. Pin this in place. I'm drawing in the seam you're going to sew. It's the same type of seam we just sewed to create the bias tape. Unpin and remove the bias tape from the brim. Now sew that seam. Trim to a scant quarter, cut off the tip ends, and press open the seam. Pin the folded bias to the edge of the brim. It doesn't really matter where the seams go, but if you're trying to avoid them at center front and center back, just be conscious of that. With my cording foot on the machine, I'm going to sew around the edge. I'm using a straight stitch, not a zigzag, and I'm only stitching about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. The cording foot really helps to keep the wire in check as you're sewing it. Be sure to backstitch when you start and stop. At this point, you can remove the basting along the brim edge only. Do not remove the basting at the head size line. Turn the bias tape to the other side. This is going to cover the wired brim edge. Once covered, pin the bias tape down to the brim fabric. We are going to use a slip stitch to sew the binding to the brim fabric. So once again, take a small stitch on the fabric of the brim and then a small stitch on the bias tape. Make sure that you stitch to the inside of the bias tape so it does not show to the outside. The stitches need to be about an eighth of an inch apart from one another. You can make them tighter, but don't make them any bigger. Once you get into a rhythm of stitching, you can pick up both stitches on the needle at the same time, one on the brim and one on the binding. 
You're going to stitch all the way around the brim like this. When you're done, do a couple of knotted stitches to keep it secure and then bury the thread and clip it close to the fabric. Clip the seam allowance on the brim up to, not through, the head size line basting. It is very important you do not clip past the head size line. If nothing else, clip to just before it. Your clips should be about 3 8 to 1 half inch apart. You can make them smaller, but don't make the clips any wider apart. You should clip until you get all the way back to the beginning. You need to make sure the entire head size line is clipped. Make sure the top of the brim is up and then you're going to pull back all the clips you just did. This helps create a collar that the crown can stitch to. I've labeled center front and center back on the underside to show the different sides. With more Peter Sham than you actually need, remember my head size line is about 15 inches, so I've cut about 18 inches worth of Peter Sham here. You're going to pin the Peter Sham to the very edge of the head size line. Pin to the fabric and keep the sawtooth edge of the Peter Sham directly on the head size line. It should be flush with the folded edge. When you start pinning, start pinning at center back, but make sure you have a little overhang, a seam allowance if you will, past center back. You can see when pinned correctly, the Peter Sham stands up on its own. When you get back to center back, you want to make sure that you have enough Peter Sham past center back to form a bit of a seam allowance. You need this on both sides of center back. Clip the excess as necessary. When you sew the Peter Sham to the brim, you're sewing on the sawtooth edge. Bring the needle from the outside through the brim fabric to the inside. You need to bring the needle out exactly on that folded edge between the Peter Sham and the brim. Stitch just through the sawtooth edge of the Peter Sham. This will create a small stitch. Then take the needle through the fabric of the brim and next to the Peter Sham. Feel free to remove and replace any pins that get in the way. I end up removing these two pins simply because they kept catching on all the thread. When complete, you'll have a stitch that holds the Peter Sham against the brim edge. Continue stitching the Peter Sham all the way around until you get to center back. Your stitches should be about an eighth of an inch apart from one another. You can go a little wider if you need to, but you really shouldn't. The sweatband or the head size lining in this case is designed to come out and be replaced. I'm making a small hat, so this is not going to happen for this particular sample, but if you're making this to fit your own size, you don't want the stitches so small and tight you can't get them out to replace the Peter Sham. When you get to center back, you want to make sure that you fold in the seam allowance on both edges. The goal is to have the folded edges meet exactly at center back. You're going to continue to stitch across the Peter Sham as you've done before, only in this case you're going to make sure that you stitch exactly on the corners of each of those folded seam allowances. When you get back to where you started, do a small stitch to knot the thread 
and then carry the excess thread out to the outside of the brim. Clip the thread, leaving a very short tail. You're now going to sew the two folded edges of the Petersham together. Stitch through the two folds that are open. Do another stitch through the folds. Take the needle to the outside of the fold. Pick up the other side of the fold and stitch across. This is essentially a little applique stitch. You can use any stitch you want. You can even stitch these to the outside of the Peter Sham if you want. This is just one option. Continue stitching until you get to the base of the folded Peter Sham. When you get to the end, take the needle to the outside, knot the thread, bury it, and then clip a tail. I like to do a couple of stitches to the outside to secure it, then clip the tail. Once sewn, lightly press the Peter Sham into the shape of the collar. This just helps it set better. Push the Peter Sham out away from its position so it does not get caught in the next stitch. Place the crown over the standing up seam allowance. Be sure to catch all the fabric and the buckram to the inside of the crown. Try to align center front and center back. Once on, now you can really align center front and center back. Use a pin to hold center back and then repeat for center front. It is important you align center front and center back to the marks you stitched. With a threaded needle, you're going to stitch the seam allowance to the crown. You're going to go through the fabric, the buckram, then the crown. You want this stitch to be as close to the bottom as possible, about one quarter to three eighths of an inch away from the edge of the crown. The stitch that holds the crown to the brim is a running back stitch. Take a stitch just behind the stitch that came out, about an eighth of an inch away. On the next cut tab, take the stitch to the outside, then an eighth of an inch behind that stitch, go back to the inside of the crown. These stitches can be anywhere from three eighths of an inch to one half of an inch away from each other. They don't have to be super consistent, you just have to make sure they're secure. When you get back to the beginning, secure the thread with a few knots, then clip to leave a tail. 
your crown is now connected to your brim. You can remove the basting along the crown edge. You can also remove the center front and center back stitches on the brim only. I like to keep the center front stitch on the crown just in case I need to place a trim in a specific spot I always have a reference point. You can also remove the head size line basting. With a measuring tape, measure from the approximate center of the crown up the wall of the crown to the head size line. In my case, it's four and a half inches. We also need to measure the inside head size line. Remember, we started with 15 inches, but because of construction and the Petersham, we've lost a little bit of that measurement. This is why ease is very important if you're making it for your own head size. My measurement is now 14 and a quarter. I lost three quarters of an inch. On your lining, you need to measure out the distance of your head size line. So for me, that's going to be 14 and a quarter. If you're going to mark this, use a light pencil. I'm using a marker so you can see what I'm doing. From the marks, create two perpendicular lines. On these lines, you're then going to measure the depth. In my case, it's four and a half inches. That's from the approximate center to the edge of the head size line. Connect these two points with a straight line. On the short ends, add sewing seam allowance. On the long side, you need to add at least 3 8 or half an inch. Here, I'm adding a half an inch. Cut out on the lines you just drew for the seam allowance. With right sides together, pin the two center back seams together and stitch that seam. Finger press open the seam. Fold the seam allowance on the top edge to the inside of the lining. You just need to finger press. With a needle and thread, you are going to sew a long running stitch through the fold line of the lining. Your stitches need to be anywhere from 3 8 to 1 half inch apart. They don't have to be exact, they just need to be relatively consistent. Make sure you're stitching just through the fold. You do not want to stitch the fabric down to the lining. When you get back to the beginning, draw up the gathers on the stitch. Make sure you pull this taut. You want to keep that hole closed as much as possible. Knot the thread with a couple of stitches, and then continue to stitch across from that stitch, back and forth in every direction. This is going to help keep the hole at the top of the lining closed more. Make sure the stitches don't show to the outside. Just stitch within that seam allowance. Once you've stitched it as much as you can, and the, the hole at the top of the lining is closed as well as it can be closed, you can go ahead and knot the thread and then clip a tail. Finished, it should look something like this. Uh, if you did catch a couple of stitches to the outside in matching thread, you'll never see it. Flip up the Petersham so you can get the lining inside. Insert the lining by matching center back seams. You want to make sure that the center back seam of the lining matches exactly the center back seam of the hat. You're going to adjust the lining to where the raw edge of the lining is exactly at the head size or the top of the Petersham as it's sewn to the head size line. 
Once stitched and the Peter Sham is flipped up, it will conceal that raw edge. Pin the lining in place to the crown seam allowance with just a few pins. We're going to use a wide whip stitch to hold the lining to the crown. Start by pulling the needle and thread through the lining. Then, about a half inch to three quarter inch away, stitch straight down through the seam allowance and through the lining. This creates a diagonal stitch. Lining is designed to be replaced on a hat that fits an actual head size. In this case, the lining's never going to be taken out because it's so small it doesn't actually fit a head. Milliners use a wide stitch here because it's way easier to take this out than a tiny microscopic stitch that you constantly have to pick at. Here, you can clip a few threads and yank all of it out at the same time. Just continue to stitch this exact same way, straight down through the seam allowance of the crown through the lining. Try to keep this stitch as neat as you possibly can, but remember, the Peter Sham is going to cover it, so if it's not perfect, it's okay. Once stitched, you can see that the Peter Sham is going to cover it completely. So once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. When you get to the end, what you're going to do is just do a couple of stitches, just as you did before, but do them in place. Then you can just clip the thread. There's really no reason to make a solid knot here. When you're done stitching, push the Peter Sham to the inside of the crown and use your fingers to press any little lumps and bumps out. Make sure it's nice and smooth on the inside. You can use anything you want to cover up the outside stitches. I'm just going to use a piece of polyester grow grain ribbon. You could use Peter Sham, a scarf, anything you want. For the ribbon, just pinch out the mount you need and put a pin through it to hold it in place. Work it off of the crown, and then stitch the two ends together, right sides together. I'm just drawing in the seam here so you can see where I'm going to be stitching. Once stitched, you're going to clip the seam allowance, leaving about half an inch or so. Finger press open the seam allowance. With the seam allowance to the inside, slip the ribbon back over the crown. It might take a little coaxing, but just take your time. Make sure the seam allowance at, is at center back. If your seam allowance has flipped over to one side, use a pin to straighten it out and even out the seam allowance against the center back seam. Push the ribbon down to the very edge of the crown against the brim. This next step is optional. Sometimes you might need to stitch the ribbon or the trim to the crown. To do so, use one stitch in a matching thread and stitch it at the very top of the trim to where it won't be seen otherwise. Then, bury the thread behind the trim and make a simple knot. Then clip the thread so you can't see it to the outside. Tuck any excess to the inside of the trim. Do one more stitch at center back and on the other side. I typically don't stitch at center front. At this point, you can trim as desired. 
To wear one of the smaller hats, what you can use is a hat elastic. It has a small metal barb on the end of an elastic band. Simply insert the metal barb to the side of the hat through an open space between stitches on the petersham. When you pull out, the barb will expand and grip against the petersham to be worn. Repeat this for the opposite side of the petersham. The elastic band holds the hat taut against the head. It can be adjusted and worn underneath hair. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to more millinery videos in the future. And if you have any questions, ask away in the comments section.